Alrighty, CPU cooling. This is something I had to put a lot of work into. And the reason I had to put a lot of work into it is because a lot of the motherboards now are narrow ILM. And what that means is that they use different mounting systems than a regular 2011 CPU or socket would use. Narrow ILM severely limits your air cooling options. And the problem is that if you want a cheap narrow ILM cooler, it's going to be very loud. It'll be effective, but it's going to be like a jet engine. If you want an expensive one, that's fine. You can get a quiet one and it'll be a Noctua, but it's expensive. I mean, really expensive. So you're kind of SOL. Or not SOL, but you're it's it's a rough spot because if you're if you have a dual socket narrow ILM board and you want to go for a somewhat value build because honestly the narrow ILM motherboards are gonna be the cheapest. They don't have a huge demand in the aftermarket. Or the square ILM boards, I mean you can just throw any CPU cooler on there, it doesn't really matter. Uh, they're way easier to use. So if you're trying to keep the price down, what do you do? Um, do you have an, a server that you can't put in a room? You have to like put it in your garage or something like that because it's so loud? Or do you break the bank on a CPU cooler when you're trying to keep the price down? So there's really only one decent option, uh, in my opinion, and that's to get these super micro and then replace the fans or just using uh, you know software to control the stock fans that'll keep the price down somewhat um, but I mean really are you gonna use a $55 CPU cooler on an $8 CPU if you're trying to keep the price down probably not um, so those are the narrow ILM air cooling options take a look at them see if any of them uh, do what you need but that's not the only option for narrow ILM, and I'll get to that in a second. Square ILM. Very, very, <laughs> very simple. Um, square ILMs, I mean, you can, anything that says it's socket 2011 compatible, all socket 2011 is the same, whether it's a Xeon or a desktop, so they will work. In that case, though, I would probably recommend the Arctic Freezer 12. That's been a very solid recommendation. They go as low as $18, sometimes $24 still is a great price. Very, very effective uh, at cooling. 130 watts it's rated up to, which covers most of the range. If you want to step up, go to the Freezer 34 um, or Freezer 33, whichever is cheaper. And those will give you 150 watts. If you want to go even more, really the highest you need to go is the eSports Duo. It's a dual fan, and that goes 210 watts. I don't know of any CPU that reaches that that high of the TDP. Um, and that's 40 bucks. Other options, Hyper 212s. Uh, I know a lot of people love those, but the issue is those are taller. The Rose will, for you, only accepts a 158 millimeter CPU cooler. And if you notice, the Arctics are 157 millimeters. So they are right there. They're right. I mean, you can close the lid. It's not going to touch. But man, it, it really couldn't be any closer. Hyper 212s, though, 159, 160 mil. It's not going to, the lid's not going to close. Um, so that is a problem. Even if you get these on a good deal, just make sure that they fit. Um, if you're in a tower case, it shouldn't be an issue, but if you move to a rack mount, you will have to change your CPU cooler to an Arctic or something like that. Uh, Noctua, I know a lot of people love Noctua, but again, you're going to pay Noctua prices. You're looking at $55 to $65, where Arctic, you're looking between $24 and $40. Now, it doesn't sound like a huge difference, but don't forget that you have two. So you're kind of doubling that. So you're looking at 100, 
$30 for two of these, which is insane. I would not recommend spending $130 on CPU coolers for non-overclockable chips. I just wouldn't. 80 bucks is a hard enough pill to swallow for two of these. So just consider that as you start to look at some of these options. And then I have some very, very cheap Ragin Tech options. These are more for uh, for like uh, Canada and um, overseas markets. I, if you're in the US, I wouldn't really recommend these because the Arctic ones are just way better. But Arctic isn't available in all of the places. So if you're looking for a budget option and you're not in a market where you can get Arctic products, take a look at these. Um, this is something that I covered slightly in the original anniversary guide, and it was liquid cooling. I have two 4U servers that are anniversary 1.0s that are using EVGA CL11s. They've been on 24-7 for a year. I have four of them and I have had zero failures, zero issues. They run super cool and they're great and they're not very expensive. I got mine on sale for 40 a piece. I've seen them drop as low as $36 a piece, but you have to make sure your case fits them. The Rosewell does fit these CPU coolers and uh, most tower cases do. If you go to a super micro rack mount you're going to have a rough time fitting them in there so I probably wouldn't recommend it um, the nice thing about all of the CPU coolers listed here are that they are Asetek based and the reason that's important is that you can buy an Asetek narrow ILM bracket for them so if you look at the Asetek 550, this is just a straight up Asetek cooler, branded cooler. And um, you can get them for very, very cheap. A lot of times you can get them for 15, 20 bucks. And um, all you need to do is buy that little narrow island bracket and you have a very powerful, very cheap CPU cooler. And it's very quiet because if, if you put Arctic P12 fans on there, which you're gonna use in your case anyway, man, I really can't recommend it enough. They're fantastic. So don't discount the liquid cooling. It's very reliable, especially with the AIOs. You're not doing custom loop or anything like that. It's a sealed unit, and um, I like them a lot. One thing to note, the EVGA is square ILM only. Everything else can use this. Asetek bracket, even though this is an Asetek unit, it uses a different mounting setup. So just be aware of that. And then um, some of these have short tubing, specifically the Dells, because of just the way they're configured. And you can see that uh, the tubing is just not quite long enough. Um, it might not be a big deal if you're going to mount them on the top of the case, in like an Anthu Pro or something like that. But if you move to a rack mount where you need to, you have that one socket that's way behind and way way farther away from the fan wall it's not going to reach um, and i guess the last thing uh, the radiator size there are two different radiator sizes one's very thick and one's the regular size which is the thin size generally speaking you want to get the thin one unless you can fit the thick one and you know you can fit the thick one um, I guess there's an edge extra thick. I don't remember putting this in there. Let's look at this one, see if it's, oh yeah, it's a big boy. Yeah, look how, look how thick that radiator is. Um, but again, I mean, you're going to get better cooling with a thick radiator. So if you can fit it, go for it. Uh, but check all these out. You can get a lot of these on the refurbished market for decent prices. Some of them you can only get new. Some of them are cool, like this HP one that has red tubes. I really want these, but they're expensive. And the only reason I want it is because it's red. So anyway, that's liquid cooling. Um, don't discount them. If you want to check those out, I'll have a video series linked in the description of this where I uh, install all these CPU coolers.
into the rose wheel and uh, set up a dual liquid cooled dual socket uh, server. So that's it for this video. We'll be on to the next section soon.